Here we have an extensive glass banqueting service, as if there was ever any doubt that Russia enjoys a long and rich tradition of generous hospitality, consider over 130 pieces from the Russo-Byzantine service designed by Ippolite Manigetti and preserved for several generations in a private collection. The Russo-Byzantine service was commissioned to represent Russia at the International Exhibition of 1862 in London at the request of the Director of Imperial Glassworks at the time. Something original in the Russian taste and highly marketable was required. Although the design would be approved personally by Alexander II, the Emperor had far greater concerns in the aftermath of the Crimean War than the dwindling income of the Imperial Glass Factory, added to which were the financial ramifications of the abolition of serfdom in 1861. Foreign recognition of Russian glass and selling it successfully to new outlets beyond the court were imperative to inject much needed income into the failing factory if it was to survive. While he is perhaps best known for his later glass and porcelain designs for the imperial yacht Yerzhava, the Russo-Byzantine service can be attributed to an earlier period of Ippolit Manigetti's career due to the dated drawings of 1861 preserved at the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg and the evidence that it was exhibited at the World's Fair the following year. A decanter and champagne glass from the Russo Byzantine service featured in the catalogue for the fair and was praised for its beauty and skill. In addition to this Russo-Byzantine service, there are several other examples of glassware, including a pair of covered jars and a large vase, illustrating the breadth of historical references revived in the 19th century. Finally, we focus on a wine set in the Winans collection, executed in 1870 after a design by the architect Sitchukov. Watercolours of this design were discovered recently, dated 1865. The identical set is preserved in the Hermitage Museum and is said to have been given as a gift to Alexander II for Christmas 1870, after it was exhibited at the 1870 All-Russian Manufacturers Exhibition in St. Petersburg. This Fabergé group from a distinguished private collection showcases the materials and techniques that endowed the legendary firm with its lasting fame. Of the 11 objects proposed, enamel surfaces enriched with seed pearls and capuchon jewels are interpreted in a variety of styles, from Louis XVI to the Art Nouveau, to create objects of beauty that often had the virtue of being practical as well, whether to store a cigarette or boast a photograph or tell the time. A pink guilloche vanity case originally purchased at Fabergé London in 1916 by Mrs Leeds illustrates the grip that Fabergé held over this American socialite, who went on to marry Prince Christopher of Greece. She acquired 65 Fabergé pieces, mainly over the course of two years. In 1921, her son married Princess Xenia of Russia, the daughter of Grand Duke Georgi. A gold-mounted rock crystal box signed Michael Perchin in the Renaissance taste was formerly owned by Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna, daughter of Alexander II, who married Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh. At the end of her life, she had the distinction of being a Russian Grand Duchess by birth, British Princess by marriage, and widow of a German Sovereign Duke. An Imperial Presentation cigarette case by Henrik Wigström was gifted by Grand Duchess Olga Alexandrovna, sister to Nicholas II. It opens to reveal a Latin signature, Olga, and date the 1st of May 1912. The delight that Fabergé took in featuring hard stones in the firm's designs is particularly apparent in a pentagonal box whose guilloche sides with jeweled accents becomes the support for a moss agate lid. This was purchased in 1910 by Princess Hatzfeld, a close friend of Edward VII. An oval nephrite box surmounted by a moss agate plaque was originally owned by His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester before being published in various Wartsky publications. 
Here, the agate and nephrite triumph without apology over the rose-cut diamond thumbpiece and gold mounts. The Lily of the Valley study, with its nephrite leaf unfurling from pearl buds still covered in sparkling morning dew, announces that the long Russian winter is finally over. Fabergé flower studies were cherished within the imperial family, with Lilies of the Valley finding particular favour with Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna and the Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna, as well as their royal British cousins. Fabergé genre figures rendered in hardstone were as rare as Fabergé eggs, as only around 50 were produced. This figure incorporates an oversized quartzite coat, onyx fur trimming, lapis scarf, jasper boots and an expressive opal face. The stolid bourgeoise clutching her purpurine bundle has, as her raison d'être, to delight us with the variety and handling of materials that form a seamless whole. Her feet are signed and dated, and while she was doubtlessly created under the supervision of Henrik Wikström, it is probable that the stone carver was Derbyshev, who was active with Fabergé at this time. Her appeal to the original owners, the Nobel family, resonates just as clearly with us today. <laughs>